wanna make sure I cover up the nail line here. I'm not gonna cut the powder yet. Gotta let it dry a little bit before I cut it. If I cut it too soon, it's gonna just come back in. It won't have that crisp, 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 crisp. So as it dry, I'm just gonna cut right here. It's a straight edge. I'm using an X-Acto knife. You guys can use like a string or something if you guys want. Let it dry and if you want, you can go back through and use a hand filer and file the straight edge. Clean this up a little bit. Now you have a little bit of a color block there. Let's see if I can zoom it in here. Now it's time for some powder marbling. And she has a little bit of glitter in here. We're gonna cap all this with clear, so. Should we just get a little bit of white in here? It's a little bit of marbling effect. With that glitter. That's pretty. There you go. This one's gonna be all nude. We're doing a V French here. These tips are so nice because they're not too C curved, so that it gives it a nice curve, but still not like um, a little bit harder for a lot of people to work with the really C curved tips because um, they make them too bulky. So I think these are like the really popular ones right now, or the non C curve. Well, they call them non C curve, it's still C curve, just not as C curve. Just to be clear. So this, the C curve is not too crazy that you you know you can do an actual set and then have it not too bulky. A lot of times people can't control their powder and the, the set looks bulky because there's too much curve and too much powder. And these are coffins, so I can just shape them in a little bit later. real quick because I want less work later with my drill bit. Make sure I don't flood my cuticles. Nice and flush. Nice, even consistency there. The tips take on. You love good C-curve? Um, I actually don't like C-curve tips sometimes when I use it, so these are actually a go-to right now. They're very popular now. A lot of people are doing the non-C-curve tips. But definitely, um, you know, I see the, I see the appeal. I see the appeal in uh, the C-curve tips a lot of people like to use, but also, now I see the appeal in the non secret ones. Just gonna lay this in first. And I'm gonna go through. I should have clear. Do 
white and clear. And it was really thin because I'm gonna have to encapsulate all this later, right? I cover up that nail line because the last thing I want to do is show up that nail line. A nice little marble there. That's so cute. I'm over here excited for her. <laughs> okay, this one. I'm going to put a lot of rhinestones in this one, so this one I'm just gonna give myself a light white ombre. And a little bit of this. So I'm gonna sprinkle uh, kind of a pixie, pixie dust over this, so it's gonna have a clear look, so I don't want it to be too strong. I definitely want to, and I want the natural nail bed to show through. That's all I'm going to do. Later, I'm going to do all clear on this. Then when I sprinkle, sprinkle the pixie beads on it, it's just going to take on the, uh, the base. It's going to have that clear look still, but look really nice. Is that? There's no, you don't see the natural nails anymore, but it actually looks really nice too. Hmm. Set's so coming along. This one's all white. You want all white. <laughs> to do the nude and V French. Matching better. What do you want to do all white? This brush I'm using right now is a size 16. My 16 crimped. I use a 16 crimp right now for this, this brush. I use my brush to brush in and not just leave the powder. I have to have control of the powder. Oop, that's a lot of pigment. See, that just deposits a bunch of pigment in the powder there. If you notice, I'm not using my clear yet. It's because I don't want to use my clear yet. When I use my clear, that's going to have to be a fresh, fresh batch. Because I don't want my clear to be contaminated. So I will wait for when I'm finished with all my set, then when I have to encapsulate, I'm gonna clean up my monomer. Then I use my clear. Because I want my clear to be nice and clear and there's a lot of pigment I'm using. I'm using nude pigment, I'm using white pigment. You know, white's a very, very strong dominant color. So I'm gonna play with that right now. Everything's all set right here. I just gotta cap everything else that I'm doing here. Once I cap it, but I'm gonna go through with the other hand. Get all done with. What size do you feel more comfortable doing nails with? I use a size 10 and it feels so small. Yeah, 10 is very small. If you're doing a fill or on shorter nails, a size 10 is okay, but a size 10 on doing on nails is way too small. I definitely recommend at least a 12 and up. I mean, I, I work with size 10 too. I've done extendals with size 10. Depending, see how the client's nail bed is very sm short here? Yeah, for me, you know, I can use a 10 with this too, but 16, I just gotta be able to control my a ratio a little bit to make sure I get the small enough bead. I don't want to get too big of a bead, but also, you know, she has a smaller nail bed, so I got to be very careful. And tomorrow I'm leaving for Arlington for my class. Starting that class, I'm going to be traveling a lot this year, guys, twice a month. 
for my classes. I'll be doing like eight classes by the end of the year. I got Dallas, Houston, Orlando. Well, Orlando's, I'm not traveling. I'm staying home for that. Um, Carolinas. I got North Carolina already booked. South Carolina, KC, Kansas City. Hopefully I can find a venue by the end of this week. A smaller brush would help me there, but it's okay. All right, let's go do that white. Let that dry a little bit. I want it too runny. Before I cut it, I'm excited for the Orlando premiere. I'm gonna be at the Orlando premiere, and then I'm definitely gonna head out to Chicago with Tino right after for our design class in Chicago. See, I gotta let that dry a little bit more before I cut it. Right before the nail line, I want the nail line to show up. too much. It's going to be stones going to be put right there on that line there, guys. So I'm not too worried about how perfect it is. Just going to make sure it's nice and thin. Then we do my uh, marbling. They're so pretty, y'all. A little bit of white, a little bit of clear. White and clear actually marbles really well together. Right. See that middle finger? Y'all know this is gonna look fire when it's finished. Look at that. kind of my glitter on there first like kind of like a base so when I marble I can just marble right over it as thin as possible we don't want too thick because we got to cap everything in clear we spoke of just to cover that nail line still want to clear 
clear look, okay? And a little bit of our glitter. This actually looks really cool when you mix these two together like this. Later on, we'll be sprinkled the pixie, pixie beads on top of this now. Ooh. Last but not least, our all white nail. Works out perfect because my mom is just about done here. And I'll be able to cap everything else. Ugh, I hate working with white. You see that? It's so pigmented. White, blacks, pigmented. Very hard to work with. You got to really really have the technique to work with that or it's gonna bleed all over the place. A lot of you guys are probably like cringing like, oh my goodness, he's working with white, like white, white. <laughs> yes, white, white. So, let's put most of this stuff away here. Don't need that glitter anymore. Don't need the white. Don't need the nude. Just keeping the clear. I'm gonna throw out this monomer. See this monomer? A lot of you guys are trying to use this to encapsulate. Don't do that. That's why you get bubbles. That's why you have issues, okay? You need fresh monomer to encapsulate. I'm gonna clean my brush too real quick because I can get some pigment in here. Give myself a fresh monomer. This will give me the ability to encapsulate the clear, nice and clear. A little bit too much there, probably. So now I'm just gonna work with the monomer and the clear to encapsulate everything, okay? See the difference? Now I'm use fresh monomer. The monomer is going to take on the clear. If I were to use the monomer earlier when it was contaminated, it's going to be murky. It's not going to be clear. It's going to cause me to have bubbling. Now ah, look at my clear. Nice and clear. No issues. More or less, every clear you buy in the market is going to be the same. It's how you use it. So a lot of people say, oh, my, is my clear not too clear? It's because you, it's, you just literally just use a whole a nude powder. Your monomer is taking on that nude you know, the pigment, or you use that pink, or they use that hot blue, or blue, or neon color. So, of course, it's not gonna be clear. It's gonna lose its um, cleanliness, clarity, I guess. But I just threw all that out, fresh monomer, so this monomer is fresh, so this clear is gonna be nice and fresh also. Brushing the sides. And it works slow with clear. You don't want to force the clear, okay? Clear is very sensitive. It's very runny also, gotta take your time, okay? You rarely see me cap, but does that, like, sets like this, we have to do designs like this, you have to cap. It's the only time you ever see me cap powder. Powder marbling, that stuff, cap capping ombres. There you go. Look how clear that is. See that? Oh, this set will be done less than an hour for sure. So first I'm gonna cap the midsection for this now here.
The reason why I didn't do the whole nail because it's uneven, okay? I want to make sure I level it out first. Then I just got to put the, the structure B, which is the apex B, on and I'll be good to go. Nice. Look at that. Nice and leveled now. Still keeping my shape. You can do these nails a little bit thinner because these are a little bit C curved, so that they're a little bit more durable. This is the one where I put on right here. Cat the white a little bit, blend it down. Give my pinky a little bit of structure. I still need structure on these nails because the clear is what I'm going to build my structure on. See? I won't need it for that pink, that nude, because I, I didn't need to cap that, but this I need to cap. So, you guys see any bubbling so far? None, right? That's because we have a nice fresh monomer. So, and I really don't, I, I try not to tap the powder too much, too fast. The more you tap the powder, the more, when you, you first lay it on, then you can cause bubbling that way. Okay? So make sure you just work really nice and precise. And the movements are very clean movement. Is that no bubbling in the clear? It. Still flushing my cuticles like I would do any other second bead, okay? This clear has to be, play that role because I did not do any of that when I did my powder marbling. This one I did already. I'm gonna cap this. We're almost finished here. We're literally almost finished. <laughs> uh, the monomer are back in stock. Go ahead and check it. The 16 ounce, okay, don't check eight ounces. Eight ounces, we don't carry eight ounces anymore. The 16 ounces, and then I'm gonna move up to 32 ounces soon once uh, I get the bottles delivered. Um, since a lot of you guys are just buying it by big amounts anyway, so I'm gonna upgrade it to the 32 ounce. So you don't have to buy two, you just buy one. Later, I want to put rhinestones right here so you won't be able to see that that much, so that's okay. Make sure the clear is nice and shaped. And we're almost done. Two more nails. The capsulation sets like this are fairly easy, fairly fast, too. You know, not a lot of work. A lot of work goes into just the acrylic itself.
30 minutes? Yeah. You guys can do it too. No worries. A lot of my students are already hitting that one hour, hour sets right now. They used to be at three hours. A lot of my students are cutting down their time a lot. Once you, you know, learn how to do it and cut all the excess, you'll be able to achieve it too. I don't think it's impossible for any nail tech to do it as set under, under an hour. I, if I can do it while living, answering questions, talking to you guys, you guys can do it while you're sitting there focusing on your nails, okay? Don't tell me you can't either. Last finger. Then we go to shaping, hand filing, e file. And the last bit of this is just a little bit of rhinestone, pixie bees, doing the French. Very simple. Probably take about five extra minutes, ten minutes for the design. So a set like this you can finish in about well, you guys wait until you see the final work. Less than an hour for sure. Especially sets like this when the design is very minimal. focus on my application and shaping while I'm doing my applications. I don't want to do too much work later. Oh, I'm so worried about her cuticles because she clipped her cuticles before coming here. Why? 